Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Sunday, October the 13th, 2024. So to start off this video, here's a look at the latest satellite imagery on the entire Atlantic Basin provided by CyclonicWX.com. There's a link in the description below this video. And what we're looking at right now is this area of disturbed weather located about a few hundred miles west of the Cabo Verde Islands off of Africa. While there is not a lot of deep convection on this right now, this could regenerate as it moves generally westward towards the Windward Islands. Back over here, there's lesser wind shear that this is going to be moving into, and there's a little bit more better conducive environment for this system to develop within. So anyone living in the Windward Islands, including for Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, including for Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, as well as the Bahamas, and even Cuba, need to be watching this system. Because again, this is generally headed westward. It may dip down a little bit before it moves back towards the west again. So anyone living on these islands needs to be monitoring the progress of this system closely. So here's a look at the latest seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see here our area of interest that we are watching right now this has a 40 percent chance of tropical development in the next seven days folks all right there's an orange area this is not yellow anymore like we had this morning it is now orange and we'll see if this gets uh, chances higher and higher as this goes further west right now it is not in a very good environment but it will become in a better environment once we go beyond the day five and six time frame as this moves towards the windward island so anyone living over here needs to be watching this closely so now the question really remains will invest 94 develop as it heads further west towards the windward islands into the caribbean perhaps cutting across just north of, say, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic in the southwestern Atlantic. Well, this look at the latest GFS 12Z model. This is the American model. And what we have right now is what you're looking at is these green areas. That indicates light to moderate rainfall on this map, all right? And then, of course, your H's are high-pressure centers. So going forward in time here over the next two days, you can see that the system does struggle to develop still. There's a lot of dry air surrounding the system. This is not in a very optimal place for development right now. There's sinking air. The air is sinking. It warms and it dries. And so there is a lot of dry air surrounding the system right now. And that's why the system is not producing any deep convection right now. But as we go to day four right now, you can see that this system does change and gets a little bit more moist. You can see the pocket there, some of the darker green colors indicating um, more heavier rainfall. And as we zoom a little closer on this, on the GFS model, we can see this is going to get really close to some of these islands. All right, like the British, U.S. Virgin Islands. If you're in Antigua, if you're in portions of Barbuda, as well as Puerto Rico, you definitely need to be watching this one. This would be for Friday morning. This is five days out, folks. Five days. Count my fingers on the screen here. Five days. It's not seven days out um, like it was just a few days ago, right? So this is a possibility right now or of tropical development. And if we look at previous model runs, this is moving all over the place. So right now, models are not having a very good handle on this system because right now it's devoid of any deep convection. And until we get lots of deep convection, until we get a more coherent circulation that the models are able to see better, um, this is going to be moving around. This might develop a little further south still, or this could develop a little further north. It could be a little slower, or it could be a little faster. One of the four scenarios here is a possibility. Now, there's a concerning aspect to this. We're going to be watching this system still in the westernmost portion of the Caribbean. Right now, the NHC is not highlighting that area right now, so it's probably not going to happen for the time being. So not much concerns on this system for the time being, but regardless of development down here near, say, Honduras, near Belize, 
just be ready for some heavy rainfall and some gusty winds that kind of enhance thunderstorm convection. Now going forward, this system does try to develop a little further as it impacts just north of Puerto Rico. You can see that little system right in here on the GFS model. This would be for Saturday morning, Saturday morning, day six on the forecast. All right, so this is day five. This is day six, right about here for Friday morning on the 19th of October. And this would be Saturday morning right here. It makes its way across um, the Dominican Republic here. And if the circulation and its upper level vortex stay in line well with each other, this could redevelop pretty quickly and then smack again into, say, perhaps portions of the Dominican Republic. But really, why go out that far when we have our seven-day forecast? And right now, this is moving all over the place. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with it right now. And our system over here, there's very low confidence for that to develop in the short to mid-term forecast. Now, the reason why the storm is struggling right now is, again, this dark shade of brown here on your screen. That's drier air in the deep layers of the atmosphere. So this is at around from about 10,000 feet all the way up to about 32,000 feet above the surface. So in a deep layer of the atmosphere where our jet planes fly, the browner the colors, drier the air. The more teal colors indicate more moisture in the deep layers of the atmosphere. And you know, Milton is a great example. A lot of moisture surrounding that system, which is why Milton was able to explosively intensify. In this case, we have not all that moisture out there. So right now, this is going to go kind of under the radar. But watch what happens. It does develop this little pocket of moisture over the next three or so days. This is in a sinking environment, by the way, in the MJO um, OLR uh, anomalies uh, being filtered out. So this is not in a good optimal uh, place for development right now at this given time in the main development region. But as it goes further to the west, though, it could find itself in better conditions for development with more richer moisture. And then you can see how that all evolves. It interacts with all of this moisture and maybe a decaying cold front out of the north. But now there's more than just moisture that we have to look at here. What about the deep layer wind shear all the way from about 5,000 feet all the way up to about 38,000 feet above the surface. So again, looking at the deep layer here, vertical wind shear forecast, redder colors indicate stronger wind shear, lighter colors indicate lesser wind shear. So going forward, you can see how the shear does um, back off dramatically in about four days. See this anticyclone over the system. Now there is shear here, you can see, but look at the vectors. The vectors are going outward from the center. So this is indicating to me that there is not much vertical wind shear here over the system. And again, we are looking at this right here. We're, let's actually zoom in a little bit so you all can see that a little bit better. So you can see light shear four days out. And as we go to day five, it still remains that way with very little in the way of vertical wind shear. So the system does have a run for its money for tropical development here um, in the next five to maybe seven days. But then later part of the forecast or the latter part of the forecast, wind shear out of the northerly direction may end up picking up as this upper level jet streak encroaches onto the system. So therefore, conditions may become more hostile, but that's of course a little over seven days out and that is too far out for these models to resolve for the time being. Now, when looking at the latest European model, this is the ECMWF forecast vorticity plot. Unfortunately, we're not able to bring you the, the, the more expensive version of the Euro. This has not rendered fully, and I actually unsubscribed from Weather Bell. So we're not able to bring that to you right now. Really tight on money this month, so sorry about that. But we'll be able to use a free version to our advantage here, and this is the ECMWF fast version of this from Tropical Tidbits. And you can see there's the little vorticity plot right there. Might be a little bit more better to find than what the Euro is showing. But as this goes further west, again, some models have this going a little crazy. Some models don't. And the Euro right here doesn't have much on this system in about five days. But if we zoom in a little bit and kind of anal analyze this, this is day seven for Sunday morning next week. If we go back a couple of runs and look at the 0Z zero zero run from last night, we can see that the Euro was a lot bit more bullish, showing a tropical storm in this forecast. And then the run before that, 
yesterday's 12 0 run had it over here so we'll see if the euro trends back into this solution right now one model run is not going to cut ties with the system and there is still potential for tropical development on this and again this would be safely north of these islands of say the caribbean as well as the windward islands british u.s virgin islands and the dominican republic but just keep in mind if this shifts any further south which it has been doing so in the last few runs um that's why there is still some concern here and that's why the nhc has this whole area here highlighted in orange because that's the area of possible tropical development now just like i said with the european model in its operational forecast there is decent uncertainty on the intensity and track of the forecast so i don't want you all freaking out panicking that oh my gosh we're gonna have a hurricane on our way there's still a lot of uncertainty, and what I mean by that, there is still plenty of models down here that do indicate that this may not become a tropical storm at all, versus other models that bring this to Category 1 and 2 hurricane intensity, which is under major hurricane at this time. Now, there is one model that is an outlier here, but this is the H-Wharf model, which unfortunately did really well with predicting as far as milton is not saying that this is going to be a wishful forecast but this is unfortunately the ceiling where we do have the majority of our models that bring this to under tropical storm intensity some tropical storm others uh, category one and two hurricane and another one up here on the higher end of the forecast and this is as of today this is the 18z initialized run showing us maybe a major hurricane but i'm not going that far and my intensity forecast for the time being is very 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 low right now probably not predicting a tropical storm at the moment with winds probably only attaining tropical depression force at the moment until we get more consistent model data in so i am on the lower end of the forecast here but it is important to note that there is some aggressive members here showing us a high-end tropical storm to a low to mid-grade hurricane possibly a major hurricane now, looking at the uh, track forecast here really is dependent on intensity wise too now the more stronger version of the h uh, wfi which is the h wharf model does have this going further to the southwest all right and then going a little bit to the northwest northwest again so this could get still close to the islands here depending on how this all evolves and yeah look at this this is still uncomfortably close over uh jamaica if you are not jamaica over puerto rico there we go i was looking for the word puerto rico some of these uh virgin islands british virgin islands as well as antigua even the butterfly island as well as dominican republic here and this would be in about four to five to six days so again there is plenty of room for change here and this may be one of those systems that avoids all land masses like we just had with uh with leslie like we had uh, recently with our other system that turned off to the north here with kirk which were good systems they did not impact any land over the ocean here that i'm aware of but unfortunately we may have something that comes a little closer than leslie and then kirk now the gefs ensemble forecast is picking this up also with a potential tropical depression here as this approaches some of the windward islands as well as puerto rico including for the dominican republic but again i mean uh, there's a chance again this does not develop at all but there's that chance that this could develop and that's why the nhc has a 40 percent chance of tropical development on this system now another concerning aspect to this system will be it's going to be moving over some very warm sea surface temperatures keep in mind this red right here on your screen is sea surface temperatures around 30 degrees celsius or about 85 to 87 degrees fahrenheit so that is quite warm for this system and i want to make it clear here milton only was able to rapidly to explosively intensify with sea surface temperatures around 82 to 83 fahrenheit so just in other words this will be moving over even warmer waters than milton moving over these waters right over here just to put that into perspective so this does have a potential ceiling 
that we hope to not see with Invest 94L as it moves this way. So again, it's gonna track this way and then it's gonna go north like that over these waters, all right, that are very, very warm. And keep in mind the 26 degree isotherm is all the way up here to the north. So this is very unusual to see. And then there's Kirk right there, kind of upwelling some of the cooler sea surface temperatures. Now looking at this from a sea surface temperature anomaly perspective, Yes, waters over here are around two to almost two and a half degrees Celsius above normal. That is incredible. So again, that's why this has some serious ceiling on it that the HWFI model was showing, but hopefully that does not pan out because if it does, we're gonna have another major hurricane that we may have to be concerned about. This time coming awfully close to these islands and then maybe getting close perhaps to say the Bahamas, but if this curves back and then runs into these islands, it could also be a really, really big problem too. So let's not ignore with what we may have ahead of 94L as it might look uh, very anemic right now, it may not develop at all, or it's not gonna develop, it looks very dirty, it doesn't look good at all, but keep in mind, things could change in a hurry once this crosses over the 50 degrees west longitude point on this map. Now, if you found this video really detailed and helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks. You guys are doing really awesome. We're almost up to 40,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet to get the latest information on the tropics near you, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. And I'll be back with more updates on this system as long as it remains a threat to the Windward Islands over the next seven to 10 days. Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow with more updates on this system.